This is Robert Kraft, and I'm your host on SNN Network, and joining me today is Joe McKay. He is the CFO of Kraken Robotics. It's a publicly traded company. The symbols are PNG on the TSX Venture and KRKNF on the OTCQB. Joe, thank you for joining me today. How are you doing? Ah, great, Robert. Great to be with you. Great to have you on. So uh, let, it's been about three years, actually, since our last interview. So I figured we'd start off with an update from, you know, maybe not, not the full three years, but at least uh, some, <laughs> you know, so, some corporate highlights maybe of the last 12 months or so. Yeah. Yeah, the last 12 to 18 months for us have been, you know, really, really busy. Uh, we finished uh, 2019 uh, with over uh, $15 million in revenue, um, up over 100%, I think, over the last three years, we've probably doubled revenue each year um, over that period. Uh, but more importantly, 2019 was the first, senior, first year uh, that we were um, EBITDA positive. Uh, what drove the revenue uh, in 2019 uh, was predominantly the sale of our, our subsea batteries, um, which come out of uh, Kraken Power in Germany. Uh, our subsea batteries are made of a, a pressure tolerant gel encapsulation. So it's more attractive to use than um, the oil compensated batteries that are on the market. Uh, we had one order last year uh, for around $9 million in batteries, uh, subsea batteries from uh, Ocean Infinity. Um, their autonomous vehicles were able to go four days without being uh, uh, charged. And that was over 700 uh, line kilometers uh, at 500, uh, with 5,000 meters. Um, so that uh, makes for a very efficient survey business. Um, and uh, you're not at sea as long, and you can get the job uh, job done much faster. Um, Kraken Power is a, is a company that we bought probably about three years ago. Um, I think all in, uh, we probably paid about uh, two and a half million dollars Canadian, and I think to date now we've uh, generated um, north of about 14 million dollars of revenue. Um, so that's been a great acquisition for us. Um, as a result of that order, uh, the second half of last year was, was very exciting for us. Uh, we did about $12 million in revenue, uh, over $2 million in EBITDA, and uh, we finally saw our EBITDA margin hit uh, 16%. Um, also uh, kind of followed that up with another great quarter in Q1. Um, Q1, we had revenue of just over $6 million and uh, $1.5 million of EBITDA and our EBITDA margins were uh, north of uh, 22%. Um, so uh, we've, we've started off uh, quite nicely here. I would say we've, we've strung together three very strong quarters. Um, there's a number of catalysts uh, that uh, will take us, uh, you know, in the next couple of years uh, higher than that. But uh, the last, uh, last little bit's been uh, pretty exciting. So, so for those who might be unfamiliar with the Kraken story, you know, I think it's actually really interesting and important that you're talking about, you know, how the company has now recognized some EBITDA margins. Can you, can you explain why this is important and investors to understand a little better? Well, I think for any growth company, um, you know, you go through a period of you know, a startup company, um, you're investing in technology and you go for a period in, in Kraken's case, I think, you know, it was upwards to seven years uh, where we would invest in our SaaS technology, our uh, synthetic aperture uh, sonar technology. And to, you know, to perfect that, uh, it costs a lot of money. Um, now, with uh, what we're seeing now is come together where we're getting large commercial orders. We're seeing our, our uh, technology be verified by large participants in the market. Um, you know, that came with the Ocean Infinity order last year. We're getting scale now. Uh, so the first time we've had scale um, and, uh, you know, showing that uh, we can generate, as I say, with over 22% margins in Q1. Uh, we think we can take that north of 30 percent um, but besides showing profitability um, that's also an occasion to shareholders that um, you're starting to generate uh, positive cash uh, in our cash in our in our instance that would be positive free cash flows we have very little um, capex in our businesses our capex is only about two to three million dollars a year so you end up with uh, you know prof profitability but also uh, with uh, heading towards uh, free cash flow positive as well Right. I, and, and I'd say also the main point in me even asking that too, is just better, better understanding the, the products and services you guys are selling, because, you know, these are this is heavy equipment in, in some respects, you know, you, of course there's the SAS model, which isn't heavy equipment, but you know, in other respects there, it is heavier equipment. So it's kind of a, a, a 
it's really showing the scalability of the of the company that you're able to you know widen those margins yeah exactly exactly yeah, a lot of a lot of hard yards as carl would say has been invested in this in this technology uh now we're, we're starting to uh you know get the benefits of that now yeah no i was going to say that that actually set, segues into my next question because in the last three to four months the company has announced projects and programs at various military and large institutions you know can you provide some details on these initiatives and then how they fit into the company's overall vision? Yeah, I, I think, uh, you know, if you, if you go back a little bit, uh, you know, the company started as a, as a sensor, the sensor company, um, then kind of went up the, the curve in terms of providing a platform, more integrated, all in one product. And what we saw with uh, the largest contract we've announced um, to date is with the, with the Danish Navy. Uh, that's a 35 to 40 million dollar contract for us. Uh, we're supplying the Danes with our, our catfish technology, our whole complete platform, which is our SAS sensors, but also our launch and recovery systems and our winches. Um, that's a really big milestone for the company. Uh, we beat out three competitors. Um, two of those competitors were large multinational tier one defense contractors, one based in the US, one based in France. Um, you know, this is something, as I say, we've been working on for for quite a long time, it doesn't happen overnight, uh, but it really gets strong verification of our products um, in the market. And ultimately this will lead to additional products um, down the road um, in, mil in the military market. Um, we're also working very closely with um, the US Navy. That's a, a, another additional contract we announced just the other day where we're helping them with their uh, upgrade, their two, uh, two man uh, portable, underwater drones uh, to have SAS technology on them. So they have a number of, um, you know, up to 150 of these out in the market, in, in the military market, and uh, they have old technology, side scan sonar technology, and uh, for successful um, helping them upgrade to, to SAS technology, shrinking our SAS, putting it on our two-man drones, um, that'll fit, that'll be a very significant contract for us. But those are just two kind of, uh, in the last couple of weeks, uh, two uh, contracts in the military market we've uh, we've been talking about. And, and and if I if I can ask, and and please let me know if you can answer this or not. You know, in terms of these these large contracts, when does the revenue recognition show up on the income statement? You know, is is this over time or is this within a given year? Yeah. So that's a great it's a great question, um, and it depends uh, on what you're selling. So. Generally, um, if you're selling a, just one item to an end user, um, you would not be able to uh, recognize that revenue until it's delivered to the customer, until they have control. Uh, but on these large uh, defense contracts, um, given the, uh, you know, the, the, the customer has asked of it to be customized, um, it's all over multiple periods, over multiple products, uh, you're building multiple products that over that period of time, um, you can essentially uh, recognize revenue as a percentage of completion. Um, so we'll be able to recognize uh, revenue in, in 2020 um, from the Danish Navy contract as an example. I figured that was a perfect question to ask the CFO. You know, I figured, you know, <laughs> I, we'd have a problem if you had a problem answering that question, but I'm glad, I'm glad you did. <laughs> Very top of mind. <laughs> That's I'm sure. <laughs> so, so I also have to ask, you know, we're still in the midst of a, of a global pandemic, you know, how, how has the company been impacted by COVID? We really haven't had any major impact um, you know, to, to speak of, to be honest. Um, obviously, you know, we had to rework some processes at the beginning when that happened. Um, you know, our production crews, uh, they went on split shifts. So 50% were on the floor at one time so they could physically distance. Um, we went to, you know, working on weekends, um, you know, and, and any employees that could work from home, um, they did so, and, and they are, you know, we're still keeping employees at home uh, with the, just the, the production staff that's it's going into into the shop. Um, when the virus first hit, uh, we had uh, some suppliers that closed for a short period. Um, that resulted in a seven to ten day kind of uh, delay, but nothing major. And then probably the more complicated aspect of the COVID virus is uh, shipping batteries from Germany uh, when. Uh, you know, typically when we ship batteries from Germany to uh, North America, it would take about uh, 48 hours. Uh, but as the uh, all the commercial flights shut down and 
you know, a lot of commercial flights have uh, a product in the cargo holds of those commercial flights. As a commercial flight shut down, we have to rely on cargo uh, flights, and obviously those were all, all filled up with either PPE or uh, just because of lack of flights. So uh, typically as something that would take, uh, you know, 48 hours end up taking maybe seven to 10 days. And uh, we'd have to maybe ship, we, one instance we shipped uh, something to Canada then had to drive it down to the United States, but nothing major we had to work around. Um, you know, when COVID, everything shut down in the middle of March, uh, we were still able to get our catfish out to our customer there in Mayhan um, by the end of, by, uh, by March 31st. So uh, maybe a little bit lucky on the timing, uh, but uh, nothing we couldn't uh, work around. Well, that's good to hear. And then from what you can tell us, what, what would you say are the company's value catalysts now moving forward? Well, I think, you know, you know number one is the, is the Danish Navy. And, and we'll have that formally signed here in, in Q3. Um, we are working with uh, another international Navy that uh, we hope to have something signed in Q3. And we have uh, two significant orders that are with uh, in the commercial survey market, I'll call it, um, that uh, we'll hope to have signed in, in Q3 and in Q4 and early Q4. If you take those four orders uh, and combine them, you'll have, you know, 15 to 20 catfish over that period of time. They will come with uh, winches and launch and recovery systems, um, that kind of thing. Um, so those, you know, 15 to 20 uh, catfish, they'll be they'll represent around 45 to $60 million of revenue over the next uh, 24 months for us. And then we also, on the battery side, um, we have, uh, you know, kind of five to $10 million a year of orders on the battery side we see in front of us. So you combine the, you know, the catfish side and the, the battery side, there's 60 to $80 million revenue over the next 24 months. So lots and lots of growth uh, ahead of us. But also, as I alluded to before, working with the U.S. Navy on the, the upgrading their two-man portable uh, for their underwater drones, uh, those, are not in, that, those type of numbers are not in um, the numbers I just rambled off. Um, so that would be on top of that, which would also be another significant order. So. There's, a, you know, there's four to five uh, significant orders here for catfish and batteries um, ahead of us here uh, in, the, in the coming quarters that we, we hope to close on. And with that, where can my audience go and find everything they need to know about Kraken? Yeah, you can get all of our product uh, and financial information uh, is available at uh, krakenrobotics.com. And uh, by all means, uh, send us an email and uh, we'll get back to you uh, with any questions you have. Joe, thank you so much for joining me today. I really do appreciate it. Wish you guys all the best of luck. Stay safe. And uh, I look forward to our next update. Great. Thanks, Robert. Thanks for having me. Appreciate it. Thank you, Joe.